the Prophet ﷺ, he loved to go up to the mountain of, uh, go up into the cave of Hira and contemplate the situation that his people and humanity was in. And the vices that were happening and so on. And on that mountain, the Prophet ﷺ, you can imagine the fear that comes to a person when you're just alone in a cave on the top of a mountain and then a man appears. And so he's on, and then the man is telling him to read. And so the Prophet ﷺ said to him, he said, I can't read. And a lot of people forget this part about that story, and many of you are familiar with it. Jibreel السلام, Angel Jibreel, he grabbed the Prophet ﷺ and he squeezed him. And he pressed him so hard. So not only the fear of seeing that person there, but he pressed him so hard. Until the Prophet ﷺ said, I felt I was going to die. And then he let go of him. And then he said, read. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I can't read. And then he squeezed him again. Until the Prophet ﷺ said, that I felt I was going to die. And then he said to him, read. He said, I can't read. And then he pressed him again, until he felt he was going to die. And then Jibreel ﷺ told him, اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم And so the Prophet ﷺ as he was walking away and he saw Jibreel in this stance and another point afterwards he saw Jibreel in his original creation covering the entire horizon Nobody saw Jibreel, but the Prophet ﷺ saw him. And so he came home frightened. And his wife Khadija, she said, what's wrong? And he said, just cover me up. And he was shaking. He said, Zammiluni, Zammiluni. He said, just cover me up. The Prophet ﷺ was so scared about what had taken place. And in fact, after that Khadija radiallahu anhu, you'll see in the seerah, she said, Allah would never do this to you. Allah would never disgrace you or humiliate you. Because you fulfill the ties of kinship. You're good to the orphans. If anybody needs help, you're the one who helps them. You feed them, you take care of them, you will never be humiliated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa after that, revelation discontinued. You will see that for many months, Jibreel didn't come back. Until he felt that Allah was angry with him. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed one of the first surahs to be revealed amongst after Surah Iqra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receives, uh, revealed Surah Al Duha. Wa Duha wa Layli idha saja. مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the daybreak that He hasn't abandoned you and He's not angry with you. And so it's a preparation to prepare the Prophet ﷺ for the enormous tests that are about to come. Even though he was treated so badly by all the people of the city, Listen to this carefully, brothers and sisters. I have a very important message here. He never ever generalized. Every single individual was a potential Muslim and a potential good person. The Prophet, peace be upon him, has left us these words. He said, keep relations with those who cut you off. And do good to people, even if they harm you and speak the truth even if it is against yourself. If you met him, you will think that Muhammad Sallallahu loves you the most because of the way he used to treat every person individually, with sensitivity and he used to analyze what is sensitive to you and avoid it until you would think that he loves you the most. Every single companion thought they were the most beloved. And this way the Prophet ﷺ kept the unity of his companions. And abolished, uh, abolished the jealousy and the hatred and the envy that could exist between them. So each one of them was a special character for him. 
And this is the way the Prophet ﷺ teaches us to deal towards one another ourselves and towards our children. Not to try and show the favorism of one to another. He said, I was amongst the crowd hustling and jostling and shoving to come and see the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, when I saw him, the first impression I had of him, he said, I knew that his face was not the face of a liar. This is not a man that told lies. In other words, the honesty and the beauty, the inner beauty and the outer beauty combined. Abdullah ibn Salam saw this from the Prophet wasallam, and he said he accepted Islam right then and there. In other words, Abdullah ibn Salam converted just by seeing the Prophet wasallam, and then hearing the very first words that came out of his mouth. Such was the power, such was the beauty, such was the perfection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed our beloved Prophet wasallam with. Yet he said wasallam. The best of you is those who are best to his family, to his wives. And I am the best of you to his family. So he used to say to them, Behold, we have been sent a people to take the people from the worship of created things to the worship of the creator of all things and to save the people from injustice into the openness and mercy of Islam and to bring justice to the earth. Do not kill an old man. Of your, amongst your enemies if he is not fighting you. Do not kill a woman who is not fighting you. Wallahi, even if she is in the ranks of the enemies, do not kill a child. Do not cut off the branches of trees. Do not kill an animal. And do not ruin soil. And do not be excessive in killing. Do not mutilate the bodies. And look after the affairs and the conditions of war. And if you hold captives out of this war, then feed them from what you feed from your, fo your family. And treat them well as you would treat a guest. For they are your captives and you have power over them. And Allah does not like people who have oppression over the weak ones when they have power over them. No, he always was gentle. And he was always generous. And when someone asked him for something, he gave everything to them. Never caring about himself. And the Prophet wasallam, he used to sleep on a mat like that mat on the floor only thing it was made from palm fiber from dried grass and that's how he slept oh people listen to my words carefully for i know not whether after this year i shall ever meet you again at this place oh people your lives and your property are sacrosanct until you meet your lord as are this holy place this holy day and this holy month. Remember that you will indeed meet your Lord and answer for your deeds. So beware. Whoever of you is holding a trust, let him return it to its rightful owner. All usury is abolished. Your capital, however, is yours to keep. Wrong not, and you shall not be wronged. All bloodshed from the pagan age of ignorance is to be left unavenged. O oh people, the devil has lost all hope of ever being worshipped in this land of yours. Nevertheless, he will try to mislead you in smaller matters. Beware of him, therefore, for the safety of your religion. Time has turned, and it is as it was the day that God created the heavens and the earth. The number of months is twelve. Four of them are holy, in which war and fighting are forbidden. O oh man, you have your rights over your wives, and they have rights over you. It is your right that they do not fraternize with anyone of whom you do not approve. But if they do, Allah has permitted you to isolate them within their homes and chastise them without cruelty. But if they abide by your rights, then they have the right to be fed and clothed in kindness. Do treat your women well, and be kind to them, for they are your partners and committed helpers. You have taken them only as a trust from Allah, and you have their enjoyment only by his permission. So listen to me in earnest, O people, and reason well. I leave behind me two things, the Quran 
and my example. If you follow them, you will not go astray. O oh people, listen to my words. Know that every Muslim is a brother to every Muslim, and that all Muslims constitute one brotherhood. It is only lawful to take from a brother what he gives you willingly, so wrong not yourselves. Be my witness, O Allah, that I have conveyed your message to your people.